Hi, I'm Kirk Thibodeau with the USGS Hydrologic Instrumentation Facility. I'm the manager of the Hydraulics Laboratory, and today we're going to go over the procedures for pygmy meter as outlined in the attachments to OSW memo 9906. Your pygmy meter, when it's transported, should always be transported with the shipping plug. You do not want to ship a meter, a pygmy meter, or carry it around with your pivot already installed. So before you do anything with your pygmy, you want to remove the shipping plug and put your normal pivot in there. Again, you want to rotate it. You want to look for any wobbling of your uh, bucket wheel. If you have some wobbling, that means that one of the buckets has been uh, banged up. And unfortunately, unlike a double A, that if the, the frame is not bent, the double A you can kind of repair the cups. You really can't do that with a pygmy meter. They're a bit on the fragile side, and you can pop them loose. So you've got it meet, you've checked. It's not wobbling. This is a good one. We're we'll gonna go ahead and remove the cap off the top. Remove the pivot. Then we want to try and remove the entire bucket wheel assembly, which includes the bucket wheel, hub, and shaft. Some of these meters they come out only one way. So we're going to see if I can find it here without destroying the meter. Sometimes you have to remove the pivot set screw completely before you can take the bucket wheel assembly off. Okay, there we go. That's off. With your shaft, you want to look, see if there's any scarring on the top, see if there's any scarring on the bearing surface, which is this section right here. And see if there's any bends in this portion of it. It's not as easy as with a double A checking for uh, any bent sections. Okay, that one looks good to me. You want to go ahead and clean your lower bearing. Again, you do it the same way as you do with a double A. This is a bearing is so small, I do not recommend cotton swabs at all. Even necking down the, the cotton swab, it will not get all the way down into the bottom. You want to try and get something that gets all the way down into the bottom. Okay, also, at this point, if you suspect your bucket wheel might be bent, go ahead and take the shaft off and take your bucket wheel and stick it on a flat surface and see if it wobbles when you press down on any of the cups. If you press straight down on any of the cups, if any of them are bent, the whole bucket wheel will wobble. Do it both top and bottom so that you make sure that nothing is bent. This one is, this is a good one. If you have to change your bucket wheel. I believe it's a 3 8 nut on the top. Again, you want to cradle this thing nice and gently in your hand because it's easy to break. And you just twist off lightly and it should come out. Okay. And it comes loose. Now sometimes your hub will get stuck inside the bucket wheel. If that happens, what we do is we take, we put the nut back on part of the way because the nut has a lip on it. We take the uh, nut driver that we use, we stick it on, and we cradle 
the bucket wheel in our hand and just gently bang it on the table to try and get that hub loose. Now you got to, like I said, you got to watch it because if you bang it too hard, you can damage one of the bucket wheels. Okay, we've got that together. We've cleaned all this. We'll go ahead and reassemble it. I took it off because I wanted to show you again, like with the AA meter, there are some numbers scribed on the top. So when you reassemble your bucket wheel, you want to assemble it so that the numbers are on the top. It'll be an S, which means standard, and then in two digits. If your bucket wheel does not have an S stamped anywhere on it, it means it's not a standard bucket wheel and you really should not be using it with the standard rating equation. So if you find an old bucket wheel lying around your office and you want to use it and it does not have an S stamped on it, you should use it only if you have an individual rating for that meter. Otherwise, don't use it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and reassemble this. When we snug it down, just hold the bucket wheel, cradle it, snug it. Go ahead and put the shaft back on. We're going to snug it. Next, we want to look at well, how dirty is it? What does the pivot look like? Uh, the uh, contact wire look like? And what does this lower bearing look like? Well, I'm not exactly going to go ahead and take this apart because I don't have the uh, a replacement bearing with me right now. But this bearing, if you need to replace it, be very careful how you put the new one in. Because if you take it with a pair of pliers and grab it and you squash it, you've got problems. Because if it jams up in here, it's very hard to get out. So if you have one of these and you want, you suspect that the yoke is bent, you want to go ahead and get the yoke alignment tool. But when you use one of these, I caution you, you can destroy a meter with one of these things. I'm not going to use my good yoke to show you how the alignment tool works. I've got this O yoke that I already have disassembled. So when you use this alignment tool, Again, you want to be extremely careful how you, how you use it. You take it, you got to remove your lower bearing, and you also want to remove your cat whisker. Um, I have seen people mistakenly screw this thing in with the cat whisker in there, and well, you don't want to know what the results were. You go ahead and screw this thing down. It should go fairly softly and easily. You want to get down to the point where the tip is right at the bottom of the yoke. Don't screw it straight in. because I'm going to show you a meter that somebody did that on. At this point, you just want to bring it right down to it. And you want to check the alignment from the bottom, looking down in to see if it lines up so that as you do screw in, it goes in nice and gently into the opening. This yoke is out of alignment, so it won't fit, so I'm not even going to... Oh, there it goes. Okay, so I'm not even going to try to go all the way down on it. So it's got to screw very easily, and you want to check make sure the alignment lines up perfectly before you start screwing this thing down into it. Got a meter here that the alignment tool said was in perfect alignment. This might be a little difficult with the camera. But if you look at the shaft and then the pivot, they don't line up. And the shaft goes down straight and then the pivot comes up at an angle. That's because Somebody took one of these alignment tools and just screwed it straight down in it, thinking, oh, it's, it's an alignment. Look, it's going in. Well, they wallowed out the hole at the bottom where the, the pivot goes. 
So now they don't align at all. So that's why I say pygmy alignment tool, use at your own risk. It's very dangerous, but make sure that if you do use it, you use it properly. To reassemble the pygmy, we've got the yoke, we've got the bearing in there. And when you go ahead and get it in, it's again like taking it off. Some meters are a little tighter than others, and it's usually only one way on, one way off for some of them. When you come up in, make sure your cat whisker is on the correct side of the shaft. When I say correct side, when you rotate your bucket wheel, you want your cat whisker to rub on the outside of the rotation. Let's see if I can get my big fingers in here and get this set screw started. We've got the bucket wheel assembly in. Take the pivot. Go ahead and drop it in. And snug it down. Now, adjusting your, your, your pivot on the pygmy is exactly the same as on double A. Use the same procedure and it's the same one quarter turn of the nut. Okay, we've already oiled the uh, lower bearing and for a pygmy, when you oil the top, you want to oil just one drop up here where the shaft and the bearing come together. One drop. More than that, you get too much oil. We've got the pygmy meter completely reassembled, lubricated, oiled. Now we're going to go ahead and do a time spin test. It's just like with the double A meter. Go ahead and put it on your fixture that you use for doing your uh, spin test. You either have a nice one like this, like I have, if you're lucky and have one of the old pygmy boxes that has a holder like this, you can use this for uh, holding the meter for doing your uh, spin time. So we're going to go ahead and do a spin test on it. You give it a nice hard spin and you go ahead and time it. Minimum spin time for a pygmy meter is 45 seconds. If it's less than 45 seconds and you've cleaned everything, oiled everything, it's time to replace your, your lower bearing, your pivot bearing. Again, with, like with the AA, you've got to replace the entire bearing assembly. You can't replace only the bearing. Okay, the normal, what we call normal spin time for a uh, pygmy meter or the optimum spin time is a minute and a half. So that's what you want to shoot for. And like with the AA meter, you want to go ahead and let it rotate slowly down to a stop. Okay, that was a good stop. Now I've got a meter here that the upper bearing is worn, so I'm going to give you an example of what happens when you do a spin test on a meter that the that upper bearing is worn. So if you hear something like that, even with it oiled like this one is, it's time to replace that upper bearing. Setting a cat whisker on a pygmy, you want to put it about 60 degrees, which is you want to contact from the beginning of one cup to the beginning of the next cup. This gives a nice clean signal for an electronic counter and also a nice clean signal for a, a headset. A word of warning, when you're using a pygmy meter or electronic counter, uh, 
they sometimes put too much voltage down the line. That that happens with the Aquacalc uh, and also with the CMD, and I believe also with the the, uh, the DMX from Sutron. The voltage is a bit higher than it is for a, a normal headset. So what happens sometimes if you start to get bad signal on your electronic counter, go ahead and remove the cat whisker and just clean the cat whisker. Because what happens is the voltage is a little too high and as the shaft comes around, as it's making contact, it starts to arc and it causes a little oxidation on, the, on that uh, cat whisker. So if you just clean it off, Nine times out of ten, it'll start working perfect again with it, your electronic counter. You don't have that problem with a double A because the double A is set a little bit tighter and it cleans itself each time it comes around. A, a pygmy, it will not clean itself. So you've got to manually clean it if you start to have problems. You always want to use the oil that is sold by the hip. This is not a sales plug for the HIF. This is because the oil that's sold by the HIF has been researched and they found an oil that's a lightweight machine oil that does not emulsify in water very easily. So it's one that's been investigated and we know the performance characteristics of this oil. If you use a vegetable-based oil, like 3-1 oil, you've got big problems because that hits water, it emulsifies, it gets gummy real quick, and that's going to slow down and impede the performance of your meter. Have you ever taken a meter apart and saw white gunky stuff in it? That's emulsified oil. You, you want to try and uh, keep away from that as much as possible. And another type of lubricant you do not want to use is a silicon-based lubricant or grease or oil. What happens there is, yeah, it will not emulsify, but it also attracts sediment. And that will scour your bearing and your pivot prematurely. So you're just destroying your meter if you use that, that type of oil. So go ahead and use what the HIF sells. It's been tested. We know it works. So you want to go ahead and use that. So that wraps up the meter maintenance. So let's see uh, if you can go out and clean your meters and get them to last for a hundred years. Thank you.